The Conquer Worry Show, episode number 11. This show is not to be considered medical advice. The contents of the show are for informational purposes only. Nothing should be considered or used as a substitute for professional medical or mental health advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you are struggling, please seek professional medical assistance and call 911 if there is an emergency. Global hotlines can be found on conquerworry.org. Welcome to the Conquer Worry Show, the show dedicated to creating awareness of the resources that are available for those who struggle with worry, anxiety, or depression. If you are struggling now, if you've struggled in the past, or if someone you love is struggling, this is the show for you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conquer Worry Show. I am your host, Jay Coulter. I am not a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a counselor, or social worker. Just someone who has struggled in the past with crippling anxiety and depression. And I work today as a mental health advocate to create awareness of the resources that are out there for those who are struggling. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Allen. See, we have a heck of a show today. We sure do. But let's get some announcements out of the way first. The Conquer Worry Twitter profile has crossed 50,000 followers this week. If you're looking for daily news and information on mental health topics, that is really our most popular platform. But if you just want to see a summary each week, sign up for our free newsletter on the website at conquerworry.org. As for the show... We are beyond humbled that the show has been downloaded in 45 countries so far. That's just amazing. 45 countries. So crazy, right? I mean, think about this. I didn't want to do the show. You, my sister Christy, my good friend Matt convinced us we should do this. And now we're telling these stories across the world. It's amazing. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Lastly, guys, we really could use your help. If you are listening to the show in iTunes, please rate the show and write a review for us. That would really help expand the reach of the Conquer Worries show and allow all these great stories to be heard by more people who are struggling. Yeah, guys, that really would be a lot of help. So let's get to today's episode. So we like to feature people who have overcome a struggle and talk about how they have done it. And we like to feature organizations that are out there helping people who are struggling. The Jason Foundation out of Nashville, Tennessee, has gone above and beyond in the world of youth suicide prevention. Today, we're going to play two interviews, one with the founder, Clark Flatt, whose son, Jason Flatt, committed suicide. And he will tell his story and talk about the work they've done with the foundation. We're also going to interview Philip Fulmer. Now, for those of you who don't follow Southeastern Conference football, Coach Fulmer was coach of the Tennessee Volunteers for 17 seasons, won a national championship, a couple of SEC titles, and was the National and SEC Coach of the Year in 1998. Now, given all those accomplishments, you know I had to ask him about purpose and finding your purpose, and here's what the coach had to say. Well, you know, as a coach or as a father, um, you you know you're encouraging your players or your children you know to enjoy life and that it's a daily effort to be the best that you can be you know to have fun in your efforts and find what motivates you as far as uh, finding your purpose. Um, I also realize that that can change uh, along the way. It uh, there's different places that you find yourself in life, stages of life. You're not always going to be at the top of the list. Um, and you and you make adjustments that you, that you need to make as you go along. I really like his philosophy for kids these days. I mean, purpose really does change as you go through life. Yeah, what you wanted when you were 16 is a whole lot different than when you're 
41 years old, right? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to play the full interview with Coach, uh, Coach Fulmer in a little while. I want to play a clip and then the interview we conducted with Clark Flat first. Now, because we've developed such a wide following in the mental health community, we have charitable organizations reach out to us looking for help, and we try and oblige everywhere we can. But 98% of the time, I'd say, Chris, they're, they're looking for money or they're looking for folks to contribute to their organizations. At the end of the interview, I asked Clark what listeners could do to help his organization. Listen to his answer. Well, the biggest thing that I always say, and we've done this from day one, if we do our mission, uh, the funding and all that takes care of itself. So my first request when anybody ever asks me like that is to, to either go to our website, go to any place that you can find some good information about youth suicide, learn about it, learn about the warning signs, learn what, what's there. It is so inspiring that his first concern was that people seek help. Yeah, you know, he's really on a mission. The organization he's put together has resources in 50 states. They've put together some amazing legislative action to get coursework into the schools. And, you know, I really can't do his organization the same justice he can. I'm going to play his interview. And then when we're finished with that one, we'll play Coach Fulmer's. Sound good? Sounds great. Clark, we appreciate you taking some time for this episode of the Conquer Worry Show. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your son, Jason? Uh, yeah, Jason uh, was your your typical, uh, and I stress the word typical, uh, all-American kid. He was a uh, a BC student, uh, much like me. He wasn't the the uh, uh, valedictorian, but but a good, solid BC student. He's a better than average athlete. Uh, uh, had a lot of friends, um, no drug or alcohol problems. Your typical uh, 16-year-old uh, young man, and. Uh, that's why that's such the tragedy that hit us with with his uh, his death by suicide that was a uh, was something that really sent not only me or the family or his friends aside, but uh, how this could happen to uh, to a young man like Jason. Uh, you, you know, it was something that was uh, not within within our line of thinking, at least at that time. Sure. And, and when did that happen? July the sixteenth, nineteen ninety seven. Uh, it'll be. Uh, 17 years this coming July, so it's, uh, it seems like only yesterday, but but it's been, been a good while now. Now, out of that tragedy came the Jason Foundation. Could you speak a little bit about how that got started? Yeah, it, it got started because of a friend that kept, uh, of course, we lost Jason in July, and and as I said, being that, that all-American type kid, I, I mean, most like a lot of parents uh, and people I talk to who work with young people today, you know, suicide was nowhere in my thought process. You know, I knew about drugs and alcohol, even a form of type of bullying back then. Uh, I knew about all those things that were, were a danger. Uh, I felt like to my two boys and what I could do. And I went to every PTO, PTA, every church type of meeting that, that, that discussed those, those uh, issues that, that were being touted as issues that were dangerous to our our, our children, uh, but after losing Jason, I realized that uh, that none of those facilities, none of those um, venues, had ever offered a seminar on youth suicide awareness and prevention. Uh, despite the the fact that that day and time in 1997, it was the third leading cause of death for young people ages 15 to 24. You know, so the actual thing that took my son's life, the third most likely thing, no one was talking about it. No one was talking about how to recognize the warning signs, uh, let alone what to do should you see those warning signs. So uh, after seeing that stat and realizing that all the preparation that that, uh, that Jason's family had gone through, his mom and dad, and you know, uh, we both had gone to all these seminars and, and PTA meetings and uh, talks about how to keep him. No one had ever talked about suicide. So we thought that we would not let Jason's uh, tragedy become another silent uh, statistic in what we call the silent epidemic of youth suicide. And we formed the Jason Foundation. We pulled together some friends, and uh, really it was a very, uh, at first thought that we would do it on a part-time basis. Uh, we, would, we had the, uh, the mission was to address uh, parents, to come up with a program that we could present to parents, um, 
not in a highly emotional way, but in very factual, talking about the danger, the ranking of suicide within our young people, um, and how to recognize warning signs and the important factor of what to do once you saw those. And so we started in, in October of 1997 with those um, sort of uh, uh, very low expectations of coming up with a, uh, uh, a single program. But then that changed, as you said, as we uh, one of our major changes came about with Coach Fulmer. So. Sure. Well, I tell you what, I want to talk about some of the celebrity involvement and your programs, but I tell you what really stands out to me here recently are some of the legislative successes you've had, Could and specifically the Jason Flat Act. Could you talk a little bit about that and the success you had and where you've had it? Well, sure. And uh, uh, we started looking at the uh, 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 teacher in service training, one of the programs we developed early on in the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, was coming up with programs. We found that as we were doing these parent programs, a lot of the parents were teachers, educators, and they came up and said, gee, this is information we as a teacher needs to know. We we need to know, and, and not just as a general, maybe some of the specific uh, uh, types of warning signs and things that would be there between a teacher and student. And the more we looked at it, we saw the real value in, in not making our teachers counselors, but, but providing them information tools and resources to better identify and know how to assist an at-risk young person for suicide. And so we started those programs in 2001, 2002, uh, but we saw that they were just put on a very long list of all types of programs that a, that a teacher uh, may or may not take. And, and my concern personally was, you know, wonder if I had sent my son or daughter to a teacher and the teacher next door had been trained, but the teacher that my son and daughter was was uh, going to school with the homeroom teacher and all had not been trained, uh, and you lose a son or daughter because of that. So I, I wanted to get away from it just being offered to making it a required subject. And we did some studying and then uh, uh, did some trial type of situations, and we finally came back in 2007 uh, here in our own state of Tennessee, and we proposed the Jason Flat Act. Uh, real quickly, what it did was it worked within the in-service training requirements already there. There's a percentage of hours each year that were elective hours, whatever they could take. So we didn't increase the hours. We simply took two of those elective hours and made them a required subjects, uh, and the required subject was suicide awareness and prevention. Uh, and it, uh, we passed that law in 2007, uh, in Tennessee, it became we became the first. That was the most aggressive uh, in-service training requirement for teachers at the time uh, that in the United States. So we're very proud of it. What it passed in here, but since that date, we have now passed it in a total of 13 states. Uh, Wyoming was the last one. So we have uh, uh, since 2007 now 13 states, and we're working with two or three more uh, for this coming legislative session. And, and the good thing about it, it's not just required. We're seeing a difference made. Here in the state of Tennessee, the, the, two, the three years right after passing the Jason Flat Act, the uh, suicide rates went down 28.3%. Uh, now, it, it's not saying it just did it because of the Jason Flat. There's a lot of good people working in this area and a lot of good programs. But you have to think that training 80,000 teachers uh, a year, every year providing them this information, made a, made a big impact on that 28%. So. And we're seeing it now since it's been passed in other states. We're starting to see similar types of, of at least the reports, of very um, not clinical reports, but, but basic reports of how teachers are appreciating the training. So it's making a difference. And uh, right now we have more than 25% of the states in the United States that have passed it. So we're very proud of that. Yeah, and you should be. I mean, you talk about making a difference there. Where, where are your future legislative efforts headed? Well, uh, it's... it's uh, Really, on the situation, we, we while we're talking with the states, we don't go out and and uh, announce the states. We feel like that puts an undue pressure on them. But we have three states we're talking with right now. But uh, because we're in the early stages, I, it's it's uh, I'd rather not say the name of the states because then it's makes it almost like I'm presumptuous presumptuous about passing it there. Sure. Uh, so we're 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 in the very early stages uh, in three states right now. Okay, great. And then. Let's talk a little bit about the celebrities that you've been able to get involved with your program. I read an article on ESPN.com that told the story of, I think the story came out in 2007, but it was a story from the late 90s, where you were just putting the board together, you had a couple teenagers, you were managed to get a meeting with Tennessee football coach Philip Fulmer. I think he just won a national title, or was in the middle of that great stretch he had. You got a meeting with him, and you went in to give a presentation, and you were 90 seconds into your pitch, and he just stopped you. 
And could yeah. you tell our listeners a little bit about what he said? Yeah, well, first of all, and I, and I, and I, hit, I hit him with this a lot, uh, he won the, the national championship the, uh, the, um, the season that came uh, immediately after he started working with us as our national, clinic, uh, as our national um, spokesperson. I always say that that's what got it for him. I like <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we, uh, we, have a, we had a team board, and we still have team boards at most of our offices across the nation. And uh, these team boards, uh, they, don't, they're not, they don't sell donuts, wash cars. I mean, they're really used to help us in promoting our awareness. And, uh, but early on, and this was in 1998, and so we were very young as an organization. It was the spring of 98. Uh, and my team board, there was about uh, eight, eight or ten kids that were on the team board, and uh, they came up to me and wanted a project, wanted something to do. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't have anything for them to do. And they're meeting here. They're trying to meet once or twice a month. Uh, and you wanted to keep them engaged, so I, uh, they they finally came to me and said, "We need a national spokesperson." Uh, that was really kind of funny because nobody outside of the uh, Nashville, Tennessee area had ever heard of us, and most people in Nashville, Tennessee, hadn't heard of us. So, uh, but they wanted a national spokesperson. I gave them the job to do that just to keep them busy, and it came out to be one of the the wisest decisions that I ever made. Uh, uh, the the young guys, uh, the three four guys that was in it, got together and and convinced the girls that were on it that uh, Coach Former would be a great spokesperson. Uh, I had never met Coach Former, had never talked with him. Uh, they put together a letter that I okayed, and we sent it to him, explaining what uh, had happened with Jason and what we were trying to use that tragedy to help other families and other young people, and asking him to be a national spokesperson for us and. Uh, as you said in the beginning, uh, uh, he called me uh, about a week after that and said, could I come to Knoxville? So uh, the kids that put it together, and myself got in the car. I practiced my speech all the way up to his uh, his office. Uh, I was scared. <laughs> I'm sure. And I got into his office and uh, sat there and started my speech. And as you said, he stopped me uh, very early on in my speech and told me that I didn't have to sell him on it. He, uh, We wouldn't be there if he wasn't already sold on it. He just wanted to know how he could help save lives, and uh, uh, so I put my speech aside. And from every ever since that that uh, time in the spring of '98, uh, that's what Coach Fulmer's been doing. He's he's been the only national spokesperson we have had, and uh, as far as long as I'm uh, associated with the organization, he'll be he'll be that position as long as he wants it. Uh, he's done some phenomenal things for us uh, in the early years. It gave us a great deal of, uh, a great deal of um, of uh, I guess confirming uh, of, of our ability and and uh, the upness and sort of validating us, he got uh, within three years we had most of the eight, uh, the SEC coaches working with us, uh, and that went on into working with the American Football Coaches Association. So uh, I told Coach Fulmer probably been about a year or so ago we were doing a timeline for the Jason uh, Foundation. And and we didn't realize it until we did this timeline that even the ones that we could draw out as far as 2012, we could draw most of those lines back to someone who was someone who was someone who Coach Fulmer got involved with us. So he's been uh, really uh, uh, a very a very big part of our success. Well, I'm sure this wouldn't surprise you. I sent an email, a blind email, to his organization saying that we were doing an episode on the Jason Foundation, and could he come on for a few minutes and talk about his involvement? Eleven hours later, we had a response from his team and an interview time set. And oh, I don't, that's I commitment. That he's, he's very uh, very passionate about trying to help us, and um, uh, I know immediately uh, uh, he's such a humble person after uh, the, uh, the firing at UT. Um, uh, he called me and said, Clark, if you want to get another, because uh, at that time we were working with uh, most of the very high profile coaches in the nation. He said, if you want to put one of those people in my position, uh, you know, I understand. And uh, uh, I, I graciously appreciated his call, but told him he would be there as our national spokesperson. It wasn't Coach Fulmer, it wasn't Philip Fulmer, the coach that was making the difference. It was Philip Fulmer, the man that was making a difference. And and uh, he's he's uh, worked very hard uh, uh, since that day too. So we're very proud uh, that uh, not many people can say for uh, now almost 17 years that we've had the, that we've had the same person work with us in that feel. So yeah, well, you guys have also brought on some other celebrities to help with your cause. 
It looks like uh, Charlie Daniels is involved with your golf tournament and Rascal Flats. Could you speak a little bit about them? Yeah, Charlie has now been probably the second longest person. Charlie's been with us probably for almost, uh, about 10 years now. Uh, and that came about through the Philip Fulmer. At that time, it was the Philip Fulmer Golf Classic. Uh, we had one of our, a survivor family, someone who had lost a child that knew somebody who worked with Charlie and and just simply invited him. Uh, I guess it's probably almost 12 years now. Yeah, looking at it, it's 12. Invited him to uh, come and play at the golf tournament just as one of our guests. And he came and really got passionate. Uh, as he said, he didn't realize the impact that, that suicide was making upon our young people. He got very pat. He came for another year or two as a guest, and then uh, he wanted to see what more he could do. So he's been working over 10 years with us now, uh, not just with the Philip Fulmer Charlie Do- Daniels Golf Tournament, but Charlie does uh, a lot of PSAs for us, um, and does uh, some reaching out through his own social media. Uh, he helps us educate the public, so he, he's he's been very dynamic. And for the last three years, we've worked with the Rascal Flats. Uh, and that really was really a, a, a really odd story because uh, I was talking to uh, Jim Tressel, who is at the time um, the head coach at Ohio State, uh, and we were in Nashville. <laughs> and uh, Coach Tressel asked me if uh, we'd ever tried to get the Rascal Flats. Uh, to work with us since I, my last name's flat everybody assumes there's some connection and it, it's not uh it's just uh, sort of an oddity about that but uh, i told him you, you have to know somebody to get to somebody like that even in nashville and and it, it turned out he was close friends with uh, the rascal flats and he made a phone call and they called back and wanted to know more about us and i have to say they've been uh, just like charlie and just like philip uh they have been uh, willing to help any way they can. We have a whole program called B1 that's built around them. A friend can make all the difference in the world, B1. And they promoted it at some of their concerts, and they've done major uh, national PSAs that we have played. So uh, we're very fortunate to have people like the Rascal Flats and, and Charlie and, of course, Coach Fulmer. Uh, that, that not only can we call them ambassadors for the Jason Foundation, but they're they're very uh, dear and uh, passionate friends for us. And if any of our listeners would like to look into the Rascal Flats B one program, you can go to Rascal Flats the letter B the number one dot com, and we'll have that information in the show notes as well. So, Clark, you guys have put together some great programs that you're getting out across the country. Did, could we talk about a couple of them? Uh, sure. Yeah. How about which one was the first program you guys rolled out? Was well, that the a- first one? As I always said, was the parent, uh, which we call parent community seminar. Now it was uh, the one we we built uh, that was really the the foundation of the Jason Foundation. It was uh, it was where I had seen the need as a parent of not having the information to be able to recognize that my son was struggling with some warning signs and issues. Uh, so we did our parent seminar first, and we still have that. That same uh, basic seminar, it hasn't changed a lot. But what has changed is the stat. You know, as I said, when we lost Jason in July of uh, 97, uh, suicide was the third leading cause of death for ages 15 to 24. Today, it's the it's the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 24. So it's uh, I wish to say that uh, it was getting better, but uh, the the odd the uh, statistics don't prove that. So. Uh, the the same parent seminar that that tries to equip uh, uh, parents or as we say now parent community people who work with young people we have a lot of uh, of uh, churches use this um, so it, it's a basic program in helping sort of bring out the awareness about how youth suicide uh, impacts our society today and and how we can recognize warning signs and and what we can do once we see those so we still have that program that's uh, our base program, but then we went from that, as we said, to our uh, uh, our first program. After that was our student program, which is a, a school-based curriculum uh, for grades seven through twelve. It's not an after-school program. It's not a club. It's a, it's actual curriculum uh, that we we used uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, experts along with education, along with kids themselves, to come up with a program to fit within a health and wellness curriculum. Uh, of a school, and uh, we've had about a little over seven thousand schools utilize that program. So it's, uh, but the big one, as you said, is our staff and our staff development training modules. Uh, that's primarily for teachers, educators, uh, but is very useful for anybody who works with youth. Uh, we have a lot of churches use it for their youth pastors or people that teach Sunday school for young people. 
where it's a it's a very sort of a grounded uh, a, a program to build an awareness for those who work with young people about how to uh, recognize and how to respond correctly to uh, to a young person who might be struggling with uh, suicidal ideation. And don't you also have a coaches assistance program? Yes, uh, we got a CAP program. It's one that's just for our. Uh, uh, our our coaches that we we have a, a a national affiliation with the with the American uh, Football Coaches Association and from that now we have four four different states that we work with their the state association just like here in Tennessee the TSSAA that we work with uh, about providing these programs but the coaches assistance program was was really designed for uh, a coaches dealing with the student athlete and some of the unique uh, pressures some of the unique situations that a coach would see that possibly a re- an English teacher or uh, uh, someone who was a, a boys and girls club type of counselor might not see, you know. And uh, it's one that's, uh, that's utilized for the coaches to help train their coaching staffs, but it also gives them a direct phone number 24-7 that they call and they can talk to uh, a master-level clinician uh, 24-7 to get uh, – not not uh, counseling, but uh, but to get some uh, uh, clinical insight to maybe what they're dealing with and what resources are available to help them. So we do that for our AFCA ambassadors uh, and for our our high school coaches that we work with across uh, those four states, which we're we're trying will be uh, enlarging those states too this coming year. That's a very robust product lineup and offering. What what type of team do you have to put these together? Well, we have uh, we have here, of course, our corporate office is in Hendersonville, Tennessee, right outside of Nashville. Uh, we have um, uh, 13 people that work here at corporate, uh, but then we we have almost 200 people that are trained. Uh, out, we have 64 of what we call community resource centers uh, that are across the United States, and uh, uh, those 64. Uh, community resource centers uh, help us serve all 50 states. That was, of course, corporate office. Uh, we have an actual 24 states we have a physical office in. So uh, we have a pretty good team, but it, it is a it is a, a very, very uh, uh, large task we have before us to deal with it. And uh, we've been fortunate and, and blessed, but still we're a very small stone uh, compared to facing the real problem of suicide within the United States today. You know, that's a good segue into really my final two questions for you. Okay. So if a parent feels that their child is at risk, what would your advice be for the first thing for that parent to do? Well, first thing I always tell a parent, if, if you even have the assignment, even if you, you have the, the question in your head, I wonder if my child is at risk, and more than likely there is something significant there. Uh, what I have seen is an era is people waiting uh, you know, I think something's wrong, something's not right. Um, it might be a stage they're going through, uh, and they hesitate. And that hesitation can can be something that uh, uh, can be really a, a, a bad result. Uh, so if you even have that question in your mind, I wonder if my son or daughter might be uh, considering or thinking about uh, suicide. Uh, you need to take action. And when I mean action, uh, first thing is to talk to your son or daughter you know, and say, Listen, I see some things. Tell them what you see. Tell them the changes that you've noticed. Uh, and then say, you know, these are concerning me. And and, uh, uh, and even to the point of asking that very tough question, you're not thinking about hurting yourself, are you? Uh, you know, and come out. Because what we have found, that a lot of, you know, the, the majority of young people who are considering suicide, they, they are wanting to talk to someone about it. It's, it's a real fable that talking to someone about it puts it in their head. It's just the other way around. That it, by talking about it, it doesn't put the idea in somebody's head. And if it's already there, it really helps them get it out to want to talk to it. So, uh, talk to your son or daughter. Ask them the hard questions. Uh, if you get where there's a need, act on it. Even if they say there's nothing wrong, but you still have that nagging question, get professional help. I always tell people to uh, to, to get the, the the highest level professional help that's available to you in your area. And that, if that's a psychiatrist, if that's the school counselor, uh, anyone that you can get to that, that uh, and and tell them and get get help for your son or daughter. Um, that is first and foremost. If you even consider something might be wrong, uh, start on it. Do not hesitate. Uh, that that can be a, a, a fatal mistake right there. Is your answer any different if you're a teenager and you think one of your friends might be struggling? 
Well, it depends on, on, the, on the level of it. If you're a teenager and you have a friend, first of all, our program teaches them to basically do the same thing. If you have a friend that's, that, uh, that's, that's acting so differently that you're noticing it, don't be afraid to say, listen, this, what's going on? What's wrong? Uh, uh, what's happening in your life? And if you think uh, because of some of the things uh, they're doing that they might be suicidal, ask them. Uh, you're not thinking about hurting yourself. The thing is, if they say, say yes, then we always tell them you don't leave them alone. You stay with them until you can get a responsible adult. Uh, and that does happen. But I have to say more often it's it's uh, they talk about it. They either say that they've thought about it, but they're not going to do anything. Uh, and a lot of times they would say, well, you know, would you go and talk to Coach so-and-so or Mr. so-and-so or go talk to your parents? It could be a lot of things. And if the person refuses, we always tell, tell the, the friend, the young person, to uh, to go to a responsible adult and tell them about your discussion, tell them about what your friend has said or not said and why you have some concerns. I'd rather have a friend mad at me and, and because I shared some information rather than have a friend that, that was uh, deceased now because I didn't share that information. Sure. That, that's great advice. I, I got to tell you, Mr. Flight, you're doing fantastic work in the field. How could our listeners help support your foundation? Well, uh, the biggest thing that they always say, and we've done this from day one, if we do our mission uh, – the funding and all that takes care of itself. So my first request when anybody ever asks me like that is to, to either go to our website, go to any place that you can find some good information about youth suicide, learn about it, learn about the warning signs, learn what what's there. Go to your church and ask them have they done anything about providing training for the parents or the young people in the church. Uh, call your schools and say, have we done anything to, to train our teachers? Uh, so to be that advocate out there asking people, and if it uh, doesn't have to be our program, it could be, you know, find a good program you feel good about and, and put it in your church, put it in your school, have the community uh, talking about it in a positive way as far as what we can do to prevent this tragedy. Great. The the website is jasonfoundation.com. Links to everything we discussed in this interview will be in the show notes. Clark, I really appreciate your time today. Well, I really, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to share with with the people that uh, that are following you, and uh, and hopefully that uh, you never know one person can hear something and take action, save a life, and gee, this 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 has been more than worth that. Then, so we appreciate the opportunity. All right, good luck. All right, sir. Thank you. So, Chris, what'd you think of that interview? That is a man with a purpose. I didn't really have to ask him what his purpose in life is, did I? No. He clearly <laughs> knows what his purpose is. He does. He's doing a fantastic job with it. I hope you guys can go to their website, jasonfoundation.com. We'll also have links to the information about the Rascal Flats program they have, the uh, Philip Fulmer Charlie Daniels Golf Classic. And uh, if you can support them financially, that'd be great. But like Clark said, if you know somebody is struggling, if you're struggling, there's just nothing more important than getting some help. So let's move on to the Philip Fulmer interview. Now, Coach Fulmer is the national spokesperson for the Jason Foundation. You are going to hear in this interview the passion he has for the organization. I want to make two apologies in advance. The first is the audio quality, and the first question is poor. I'm able to clean it up about halfway through the first question. We just bought some new equipment for the show, and honestly, I was struggling with it at the first part of the interview. The second thing I have to apologize for is it is abundantly clear that I'm nervous interviewing Coach Fulmer. Wouldn't you say, Chris? Yeah, I can't imagine why you were nervous. I mean, speaking to a Tennessee icon when you are such a huge Tennessee fan. Well, you know, I didn't tell him I was a Tennessee fan. I know. Yeah. I'm very impressed by that, by the way. Well, th this show's about something much more important than Tennessee football. Now, there aren't too many things more important than Tennessee football, but this is more important. Yes. All right, so here is our interview with Coach Philip Fulmer. Today, we are joined by Coach Philip Fulmer, and I know this doesn't happen very often, but we are not going to talk about football. Coach Thanks for joining us today to talk about the Jason Foundation. Jay, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for uh, you know making the awareness of the Jason Foundation and and the problems um, that they try to work with uh, you know more visible to our public. 
Sure. Well, tell us, how did you get involved with the Jason Foundation? Uh, a good friend of mine who has become a great friend, uh, Clark Flat, um, kind of called me out of the blue. He had put a little, community, a little uh, group together in a community in Hendersonville of students, and unfortunately he had lost his son, uh, Jason, to, uh, to teenage just to suicide. And um, he, had the, he had the students contact me first, and uh, it, it was a perfect fit for me at the time in 1998, uh, something I wanted to do uh, to educate and prevent the, the, the suicide issue that was going on in our country. We, we lose 100 kids a week uh, in our country to, to, teenage, to suicide, particularly teenagers. And me coaching young people at that age, me having children that uh, were that age, uh, all of those were concerned for me. And if I could help in that area, I was very interested in helping. I don't think Clark really thought at the time that um, – because you know, they were just a startup kind of foundation that I would be involved, but I, I just jumped in and with both feet and, and really am glad I did because it's become a great relationship, and I think we've done a lot of good around the country. Yeah, Mr. Flat has done a fantastic job with that foundation, and I think we're going to have a chance to speak with him for this episode, but what has been your experience working with him and watching him build this? Well, I, I hope that you will speak to him. He, he is, he's got a great passion for this, obviously, from losing his son. And he took a, a tragedy and, and turned it into something in Jason's name that has been a very, very positive uh, uh, turn of events. And we've got a lot of people involved, the American Football Coach Association, the National Attorney General's, uh, some big corporations that have supported us along the way, and we've impacted a, a lot of a lot of young people. My experience has been nothing but good, first class. You know, ninety eight cents out of every dollar goes back into the communities that it comes from and the foundation, and and um, you know, you just don't hard to see that anymore. And and uh, you know, if you just around them and 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 they have a great golf tournament every year that raises some money and everything and a lot of the parents that have lost children you know will come back and volunteer and and uh you know if you're around those those guys you just count your blessings you know if you've had a healthy family and you feel you know you feel their loss and so i'm i've I've gotten a lot more out of it probably than i've been able to put in as the national spokesperson but uh i enjoy clark flair a lot that's great. And Coach, as somebody who has coached thousands of young men over the years, what advice would you give someone who is struggling and maybe afraid to go out and seek some help because of the stereotypes and misperceptions about mental illness? Well, you know, Jay, is the fact that we have been around a lot of young people in our, in our lives, and then you also throw in your own children into those categories of, of concern. You know, you just need to pay attention to what's going on in their lives as parents, as educators, as, you know, as, as, as mentors along the way. But, you know, my suggestion, you know, as far as it, if I could give advice is, is to seek help. You know, the family uh, support system, there's always a friend support system. Almost every time before uh, someone attempts suicide or whatever, they tell somebody. They tell a friend ordinarily, and oftentimes the friend doesn't know what to do with the information. And this is a part of what Jason Foundation is about, is education and, and prevention. And so we teach students, uh, you know, what to do with that kind of information. We teach teachers and educators what to do with the information and how to how to respond accordingly. But, uh, you know, from an individual standpoint, uh, you know, they, they certainly want to seek advice and think through, uh, you know, their decision process and, and you know, get rest and, and, and those. But, you know, surround themselves with people that are going to support them. Yep, that that's great advice. And coach, have you personally found any methods for managing worry or stress that are most effective for you? Well, kind of, kind of what I just went through. You know, I, I'm fortunate as most of us are to have a family situation that, uh, particularly with Vicky, my wife, you know, that we can share and talk and get good advice along the way and lots of good friends and support systems, not just, uh, 
not just outside, uh, but but within within even in, within the workplace. You know, been able to to find find those people that you enjoy and trust, and and kind of help you get over the hump. And you know, when I when I find myself in a stressful situation, usually the best thing for me to do is think on it and spend some time and seek advice and counsel from people that um, that might be more experienced or more aware. Uh, of or, uh, of, that, of those kinds of situations, and and you know, compare notes. You don't have to make a decision today. You know, you usually you have you have some time, and and uh, you know, seeking that counsel is really important. Okay, well, hey, tell us a little bit about the Philip Fulmer and Charlie Daniels Golf Classic. Well, it's a fantastic uh, tournament. Uh, uh, it's grown obviously over the years. I think this will be our sixth, maybe our seventeenth year uh, coming up. Um, and uh, uh, we have it in Nashville at the Hermitage Golf Course. We have no issues filling up the, the tournament whatsoever. Uh, we have two courses that we play, so we we you know, it's a big tournament. Uh, great attendance. Um, Charlie Charlie came on, I guess, uh, uh, eight or nine years ago. Was raised a whole other level of awareness because of his, you know, his ability to reach out to, you know, lots and lots of people. Um, he, um, you know, has the same passion that I do for young people or people in general, and 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 the military and all, all those folks that we try to serve. Uh, it's well attended. Uh, we, Charlie does a little mini concert after the tournament, which is always, a, always a big hit, but everybody knows why they're there. It's to have fun and, 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 and relate to each other and, and those kinds of things. But the biggest thing is to raise money and also awareness for, for the Jason Foundation. And it looks like you guys have raised over a million dollars so far. We have, um, it's been a great success. Um, the good Lord has allowed the weather to cooperate most every year, which is always a plus. And and the golfers continue to come out. Some of them have come out every year since since we started. And uh, but also we're always pleased to get new new guys out. Uh, uh, a good number of my former players come uh, and play in it. Uh, Al Wilson, who was captain of our national championship team. Will be there again this year. He's been there a couple different times, and um, a good number of other other um, former players. And that's always a big hit because there's a lot of football fans there, not just Tennessee fans, but football fans in general. And uh, it's a fun day, and and, uh, and you know, food's good. They have a little little silent auction type thing. So hopefully, we'll continue to raise those money, those dollars. So we have listeners from all over the world, Mr. Fulber, and how could they help support both your golf classic and the Jason Foundation? Well, the, the whole thing is about the Jason Foundation, and you can do it through the golf, obviously. Um, you know, can join us and, and, and that sort of thing. We have we have people that make a number of private donations that uh, that just allow us to continue you know, on the path that we're on because we're, we're – Trying to get out there as much as we as we as we possibly can. We're a five hundred one c three organization, so you know it, it is. They can you know they can run it off, and uh, we're 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 very blessed to to have had great support, and and, and we we hope to continue to, to do so. Uh, they can go online uh, and uh, just you know stationfoundation dot com and and make donations that way if they would like to. It's a wonderful organization. And um, as I said, 98 cents of every dollar goes back to the efforts to uh, uh, find those warning signs that uh, may prevent a young man or young lady from committing suicide. So it's a fantastic organization. really is. It really is a great organization. And, Coach Fulmer, we just have one last question for you. And, it's a question we try and ask everybody on the Conquer Worry Show, and it relates to purpose. We feel that one of the best ways to help manage a mental struggle is to live in relentless pursuit of your life's purpose. And as someone who has mentored so many young men, do you have any thoughts on how a young person today could find that purpose? 
Well, you know, as a coach or as a father, um, you you know, you're encouraging your players or your children, you know, to enjoy life and that it's a daily effort to be the best that you can be, you know, to have fun in your efforts and find what motivates you as far as uh, finding your purpose. Um, I also realize that that can change uh, along the way. It, uh, there's different places that you find yourself in life, stages of life. You're not always going to be at the top of the list. Um, and you and you make adjustments that you that you need to make as you go along. Uh, uh, but fulfilling yourself and and surrounding yourself with people that that care and 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 uh, you know will help you make decisions for the right reasons rather than you know always putting yourself in a position that you're you know out feeling like you're out by yourself. So maybe that's not the case because. There's always other other people that are willing to help and support, and you know, and finding that comfort level with those people is is really important. Uh, my best teams uh, were teams that worked together and 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 had a had a focused purpose uh, to be the best that they could be, whatever that whatever that was. And, and along the way, that 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 goal might change. Uh, uh, a bit with with events and and that's okay that's a good thing actually that's part of life that's great advice coach Fulmer thank you for your time today but more importantly thanks for your generous contributions of time and money to the mental health community thank you Jay I appreciate it very much I just can't thank coach Fulmer enough for coming on this episode to talk about the Jason Foundation and of course for Clark coming on to talk about the great work that they're doing. And if you would like to learn more about their organization, head on over to jasonfoundation.com. All the links will be in our show notes. Did did I forget anything, Chris? You want to make sure people know that if they want to get involved in the Philip Fulmer, Charlie Daniels Golf Classic, they can do so. And it is on May 20th of this year. That's right. May 20th this year, it seems like for the past 17 years, they've always done it late spring. If you can ever participate in that event, please head on over to Nashville and help the folks out. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Conquer Warriors Show. And as always, remember to live in relentless pursuit of your life's purpose.